presence with us, we give you thanks as we remember our baptism today, as we celebrate your baptism. And Lord, in our baptism, we are called to serve you and to share your grace and ministry with the world around us, and we do that as best we're able here. Help and guide us, Lord, as we dialogue together about the ways we should do that, uh, the rules by which we govern, by the ways we reach out and um, do the things we ought to do, both within ourselves and in the community abroad. Bless us in our deliberations. Help us to have wisdom and to have uh, patience with one another and to have clarity of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Val, do we have a quorum? 70? Okay. Terrific. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, Frank Cook and his group of uh, folks that uh, did just a tremendous job in putting this... Uh, revitalizing this Constitution and getting it updated and, and, and moving forward. You guys did a great job, and I know you spent countless hours uh, doing that, and I just want you to know from a council perspective, we thank you very much for that. Okay, the purpose of this meeting is to consider proposed amendments to the Constitution, bylaws, and continuing resolutions no other business will be transacted. The adoption of the constitutional amendment requires a majority vote at this meeting and a ratification without changes to the next annual meeting on February the 3rd by a two-thirds vote has been approved by the Florida and plus approval by the Florida Bahamas Senate. Adoptions of the amendment C9.06 will not require ratification as it brings the Constitution into conformity with the model Constitution for the Congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church. This amendment becomes effective on adoption. The amendment to C9.23 has been withdrawn since the Constitution already reads as the amendment proposed and is therefore unnecessary. The adoption of the bylaws amendments requires two-thirds votes at this meeting. The adoption of an amendment to the continuing resolution requires a majority vote at this meeting. In addition to the amendments, we will adopting several provisos which set the effective date for the amendments, allows technical corrections, and provide for a transition process for the changes made in the constitutional congregational con congregational council because the amendments are interrelated if there is no objection the chair will allow questions about constitutional bylaw and continuing resolution amendments at the same time the following questions, the amendments to the Constitution will be moved and be, for, be, be before the Assembly for discussion and action following the vote on the Constitutional Amendment. The bylaws amendments will be moved and therefore be before the Assembly for discussion and action. Following the vote on the bylaw amendments, the continuing resolution amendment will be moved and before be before the assembly for discussion and action. Is there any objection to this procedure? Since there is no objections, are there any questions about the amendments? Will the secretary please? Oh, I'm sorry. We'll get you a microphone here. Sorry, Frank, I didn't see you over there. Uh, I'm Frank Cook, and I think I understood the, the question that you, or the statement that you just made. Um, but I have two questions that I want to talk about, which have to do with C120202. And I think those are bylaws. Am I correct? By the numbers? Correct. Okay. They're both of mine are bylaws, so 
I'll shut up for a minute. Somebody else? Right behind you. Got to coordinate the pen, the microphone, and my glass. On page one, um, chapter four, statement of purpose, the third line down, it refers to the villages in Summerfield. Are you including the new area that is Wildwood as part of the villages, or should we say Wildwood version? I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? On page one, where it says statement of purpose, the paragraph, the fourth line down, refers to the villages and Summerfield. Should we include Wildwood? It is still part of the incorporated villages. Thank you, that answers my question. Will the secretary please move the constitutional amendments and provisos? On behalf of the Congregation Council, I move the amendments to the Constitution, Articles C1.02, C1.11, C9.06, C10.02, C10.03, C10.04, C10.06, C11.01, C11.02, C11.03, C11.04, C11.05, C12.01, C12.02, C12.03, C12.04, C12.05, C12.07, C12.08, C12.11, C12.12, C13.01, C13.02, C13.03, C13.04, C13.08, C14.01, and C16.01 with provisions 1, 2, 3, and 4. Everybody got that? <laughs> Since the motion comes from the Congregational Congress or Council, a second is not required. The amendments to the Constitution and provisos are here before you. Is there a discussion? Yes. Uh, I have the mic, I'm sorry. Is there any difference between what was originally put on the church's website and the document that was out here in the hallway? No. Thank you. Dave? I just have a question on the C11.05, the, the logic in, in saying that people have served three years can't serve again on the council. I mean. Not, I'm not talking about continually. I think that uh, it's a mistake to c cancel out something like that because down the road, you never know what's going to happen. You're eliminating people from serving this congregation that uh, are qualified and want to serve. And I think by putting this in here, you're saying, all right, they're all done. They got nothing else to do with the, the, uh, the council or anything. Mark? Mr. President. That's speaking specifically of a president of the council who could serve at large again, but they cannot serve as the vice president or president again. It's for the president's um, position specifically, not for anybody on council. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, are you ready to vote? The question is on the amendment to the Constitution. With Wait, there's one second. Hands on the I just want to make sure that 
when we vote on this, we will later have an opportunity to talk about the bylaws. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. Okay, are you ready to vote the question on the amendments to the Constitution with provisos 1, 2, 3, and 4? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Okay. The ayes have it, and the amendments to the Constitution and provisos 1, 2, 3, and 4 are adopted. The amendments to be presented at the February 3rd annual meeting for ratification. Will the secretary please move with the bylaw amendments and the provisos? On behalf, of, on behalf of the congregation, council, I move the amendments to the bylaws C4.05.01, C8.05.01, C10.01.01, C11.01.01, C12. Dot zero one dot zero one C twelve dot zero two dot zero one C twelve dot zero two dot zero two C twelve dot zero two dot zero three C twelve dot zero two dot zero four C twelve dot zero four dot zero one C twelve dot zero nine dot zero nine C twelve dot zero eleven dot zero one C twelve dot zero eleven dot zero two C13.01.01, C13.03.01, and C14.01 and .01 with provisions 5, 6, and 7. <clears throat> Since the motion comes from the Congregational Council, a second is not required. The amendments to the bylaws and provisos are before you. Is there a discussion? Yes. Get here first, please. We'll, go, we'll just work backwards. How's that? I can, yeah. My name is Phyllis Hill. Um, it mentions in C120204 three year terms. As a spouse of a congregational council, I have, I'm glad he said yes. But three years is a long time for us retirees. And if you would be re reelected, that's six years. That's a long, long, long time. I think two years is sufficient. Thank you. Next. I'll just work. You want him to go first? Or you want Roger. Uh, in the handout here, the, the, on the back of the agenda, it talks about the uh, bylaws under item five, it talks about the bylaws being effective upon adoption, which I would assume to mean at the next congregational meeting. Is that what, is that what the thinking of, what the thinking is? Actually, I have a problem with that. Uh, I don't think it be, can become effective until the Senate actually approves it. Pardon. Senate approval is not required by the bylaws for the bylaws. Nope. Senate approval is not necessary for the bylaws. I would like to amend the, uh, I move to amend, the, <coughs> excuse me, um, C120201 by adding a paragraph D, C120201. That on page five, did I hear somebody say? Yes, okay. Page five of of your handout of this. <laughs> Pardon me. Well, you're looking at the Constitution. 
No, it's, this is the proposed uh, amendments to the Constitution, bylaws, and continuing resolutions. It's all one, one doc. Am I correct, Lynn? It is all one document. Yeah. Yes. What's, the, what's the number again, Frank? Page five, and we're talking about what number? C120201. Here's what I'm at, my proposal for amendment is. By adding a paragraph D that says, the Constitution Council shall ensure that a letter is sent no later than three days after the December Congregation Council meeting to all voting members of the congregation listing the names and positions of all nominating members. This, for those of you who some of you have heard part of this discussion originally when, when the when the when the, the well this original proposal gave us a um, a problem with dates. Um, it did not announce to the congregation who the people were who were going to run until inside the time limit for which to have um, the, the the list out. So. Um, Nominate, there's, nominations there's, there's, there's for the no second. There, there's a second? Yes. Okay, now can I continue? Now I open for discussion. Okay, thank you. <laughs> D is the Congregational Council shall ensure that a letter is sent no later than three days after the December Congregation Council meeting to all voting members of the congregation listing the names and positions of all nominated members. This is to make sure that the congregation is informed who is of who is running in time for the congregation to put somebody up if their choice is not there. It just fixes the dates. I had talked to some members of council um, and they were going to propose, and, I'm, and this, is, this, was, this was what I was told, they were going to propose a continuing resolution to put it in the bulletin. My issue is, my, my, my feeling is that's a wonderful idea, but it won't reach all the people in the congregation unless you send a letter. And all I'm suggesting is we send a letter rather than just putting in the document. Is there any discussion? I'd like to speak to that as not just a member, but as the business administrator. Um, I agree with the intent of Frank's amendment. However, I don't agree that it needs to be in the form of a letter that is mailed out to the congregation. Um, I believe that publishing it in the newsletter on our website, um, it could be on our Facebook page or other electronic means. Our, our Constitution allows for notification by electronic means, and it could be an email sent up, excuse me, to the congregation. And one of the reasons I feel so strongly about that is that, um, number one, the cost of a mailing. Um, if it goes bulk mail, we're talking about $500. If it goes first class, we're talking about $1,000. But more than that, the council meeting is on December 17th, 2019, or any council meeting in December is the third Tuesday. That's one week before Christmas. Our staff and our congregation are extremely busy the week before Christmas. To add another huge mailing like that on top of the number of bulletins and services and duties that we have, I think is asking a lot. I also feel that many of our members travel during the holiday, 
and would not even be home to receive a letter that might get mailed to their home. It's an assumption, but it's my assumption. Um, the, um, this would require the mailing to go out by Friday, December 20th. In essence, giving the um, staff two days to put that mailing together. If it goes by bulk mail, delivery would arrive at your homes approximately December 23rd or 24th. If it went first class, probably December 21st or 23rd. You would be receiving, so this is assuming that this is publicized in other ways. You would then be receiving in about four weeks another letter announcing the annual meeting, and in that letter you receive a list of all of the nominees, the positions they've been nominated for, and their bios. So I just feel very strongly that um, the continuing resolution that the council would propose requires notification immediately following that meeting but it allows notification through a means that is not as labor intensive or as costly. And, um, and I also feel in relation to that, that if our members are truly interested in knowing who's been nominated and who's running, that they will look to those places when they've been advised that those are the places they can find that information in addition to speaking to any member of the council or the nominating committee. So I'm against that motion. Any further discussion? Um, if I could, a couple things. No, not me. We have further discussion. My question is, when does the nominating date close? Because I thought I saw in the newsletter that Doug is still taking nominations. So if that was to be sent out, is it a complete list? When is the date closed? December uh, 18th. The closing is 21 days for nominees, 21 days before the annual meeting. Right? That's wrong. That's the nominating committee. They shall. The nominating committee submits a list of the nominees to the Congregation Council at least 10 days before the regularly scheduled December council meeting. And then the council ensures that that list is approved at their, uh, that it, it is communicated to the congregation beginning November 1st. No. no. December 1st. No? The nominees go to the council 10 days before their December council meeting, and then they're announced at the December council meeting. Ron. Ron Duran, as a past president of this congregation, I can only say you need to communicate, communicate, communicate to get the word out to everybody. And I'm in favor of what Frank is talking about, regardless of the burden it would put on the administrative staff and if the dollars it would cost. Voting for a council is probably the most important vote we have for the year. And if we can't put the efforts in to be sure that everybody gets the word, uh, I don't think that's right. Any other discussion? Anybody else? Am I missing anybody? Anybody? Raise your hand so we can see you. I think you can hear me. What? Wait a minute. Well, let's let's be sure. You can never be too sure.
I'm Tom Gruy, and uh, I just want to uh, support Val's position for two reasons. Number one, I have a concern about what may happen. All kinds of things can come up within the Postal Service and everything else in terms of three days to deliver uh, a mailing. Uh, if it doesn't go out, then what does that do? If it's in the Constitution, it's a requirement. There's no way around it, right? So I think that every effort will and should be made to communicate as much as possible. The second reason that I would say that I agree with Val also is that, you know, I recognize that we need to be sensitive to the congregation and the people that are in the congregation, but I also think we need to move forward in terms of encouraging people to get in the 21st and 22nd century in terms of communications and how those go about. So I think that the means that Val communicates uh, in terms of social media or other places is sufficient. And in cases where a member cannot or will not uh, use those means, perhaps we could uh, make a special exception in terms of doing a mailing just to those people requested. But to put it in the Constitution seems, or the bylaws seems a little excessive. Anybody else? Frank? Um, my only thought is that, is that I agree with Ron, is that communication is the key, and I think we all agree with that. A simple way to solve the timing issue is for the council to decide that they would meet on the second Tuesday of December instead of on the third. That gets them away from the Christmas rush and everything else. That's a simple way to solve it. That's not my business, but I think, I think we need to send something to, to the entire congregation. We don't know um, his comment back there that, uh, that we may have issues with, uh, with communication and stuff like that. Yeah, we're an old congregation. We got a lot of people who only do mail. They don't do email. They don't do those other things. They have a, they have a choice, but by, by, by limiting your um, access to that information to just the bulletin, um, I just think we, should do, we can do better. Take one up to uh, Dave. I, I kind of uh, support Val in this just just because uh, the if she sent the emails out. I think if you're if you're inter if you're in, know who's being nominated already because that, that list comes out November first. You'll take the interest and you'll follow up on it. If that, um, most people, I don't think, get too much involved until vote time. I've noticed, but. But I think that, that if the email went out to people, they would see it. And I think it would be just as effective and save the money of the mail and that stuff and the confusion during the holiday time. Okay, thank you. Dr. Kent. Dave? Um, Maybe I should leave while I'm ahead. I keep turning Yeah, I keep turning it off. Keep your finger away from the button. <laughs> now it's working. Uh, if the way what I'm thinking is, if there really is a true interest in people wanting to be on the committee, the executive committee, or the uh, uh, the council. They would have made a, an effort to be known at that time, to come at it uh, three days or right after again and saying, I want to be on it, I would like to be on it. Uh, I wonder how serious they, uh, they really are. And I'm also, I'm also wondering, being the reciprocant last year of, in that position, if there isn't something else motivating this. And I recognize that uh, I'm taking a, uh, a strong, uh, making a strong statement about that. But I guess I'm asking each one of you to examine yourselves and really think seriously about it 
and think about, is this in the Christian way? Thank you. Let, let, let me just go back. What the intent of this amendment was, or is, is to eliminate the possibility of what happened last year when a bunch of members decided that there were no women nominated and they went out and they got a, had a petition to nominate a woman. Now, when the committee, the, the Constitution Committee, first presented uh, our proposal to the council, the council came back and said that they were, uh, it had to be nominations from the congregation had to be 21 days before the congregation meeting. Yet, announcements normally go out of, for that meeting 10 days in advance, which would not allow the congregation, any member of the congregation or members of the congregation to nominate someone from the congregation who was not nominated by the committee or by the council. Now the council came back and said to the committee, we will announce it after the December council meeting, we will put it in the newsletter. And we thought that was fine and dandy, except for just one thing, not everyone will get a newsletter. Not, everyone, not every member will see who the nominees are on the internet. And the only reason that we're making this amendment is that so every voting member of the congregation will get to know who the nominees are. There was no other reason. Hi, my name is Jeff Dunphy, I'm a member for a little over a year, and I just want to say, in my opinion, there's over 2,000 members of Hope Lutheran Church. How many of us are here today? So, sending out letters to 2,000 people for the 70 people that are going to show up to show concern and their interest in our future, I don't get it. And kind of along those same lines to speak to what Roger said, I don't know that it's so much about who the congregation wants to serve on council, but who actually has an interest and a desire to serve on the council. And if that person truly has an interest and a desire to serve on the council, they will have put their name in and let it be known that they are interested at the time that nominations are opened. And to just say that we need to mail out this letter so people can know who's not there so that they could nominate somebody because like what happened last year, personally I think that's ludicrous because if somebody truly has a heart and a mission for this church, they will put their name in at the time that nominations are called for. Question that might help with clarification in our dialogue is the names that are submitted to the nominating team all come to the council and all get listed. It's not, it's not being filtered. So everyone, it's not like, oh, only they, they, only they nominate. It's anyone who's nominated goes to them and, goes, and then gets handed off to the council, correct? So there's no, there's, that's not correct.
Okay, so that is not guaranteed. It's, a, it's not a provision that's in the Constitution. It's just a, a way that we do things. Okay. That was a question somebody else had about that, and I... Here. I'm, I'm just going to hand him a mic. The, the question was, the question that was asked was, if somebody is nominated to the nominating team, if that's handed to them and that's handed on to the council, is that name guaranteed that is then given to the congregation, or is there a filtering process as it comes down? That was the question. I can only answer uh, from looking at your constitution. As it's currently written, there simply is a nominating committee and it's charged with a task. There are no regulations about how the nominating committee operates, how it gets named. There's nothing like that. It could, or the council could, impose a system for doing that. That's perfectly le legitimate, but there isn't a constitutional provision for it. One second, Frank, please. Don? Uh, I call a question on the vote. We have a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> We're having a mo a, a, a there's a, there's a question on order. They say, are you asking the same question he asked? Yes, no, I'm just okay. there's a One, room. can we withdraw, the or, withdraw this amendment? Okay. Is it, can we have any more discussion, even though he's called the question? Should the question be called? We need a vote on it. All in favor? Calling, calling on the question. All opposed? We don't have two thirds. It's still open. I'd like to ask a couple of questions. Why don't you come up here? I'm, I'm only going to go part way. You're on the council. Did you volunteer, or were you asked? I was asked. You're on the council, Doug. Did you volunteer, or were you asked? Yeah, yeah I was asked, but let me just say a couple things here. No, um, no, 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 it's my turn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, this is, this is out of order, okay. I believe. I'm sure it's out of order. I withdraw the motion. Is there a second? It, it takes it takes yes. it's a, it takes unanimous consent of the body here to withdraw it now that it's been put on the floor and seconded. Does anybody object? Okay, motion removed. Okay, I have a. Uh, a note, the list that was read of the bylaws is missing one of the ones that's on the list. Somebody pointed that out. On page four of nine, C12.01.01 .01 was not read in the motion, but it is listed here in the sheet. So it might have just been a glance over because you read a ton of numbers. C120101. But it wasn't. It wasn't. But it wasn't spoken. It wasn't read out as part of the as part of the motion. So they're just pointing that out as a moment of order to make sure it was added in. However, we have to do that. Good catch. I'm waiting to hear from the parliamentarian what to do on that. As far as my script says, it was read out. Okay. So it's on the script of what was handed out to people. It just wasn't verbalized? 
Okay. So if it wasn't verbalized, what, do we have to do anything with that as parliamentary? Do we have to do anything? If it was on the written part, but it just was glossed over in the speaking, do we have to re-speak it or? So, has it, but it's not on this. The two-page sheet, the two-sided sheet, it's not listed there. Okay, that's why it's not there. That's why I brought it up, because they asked the question. Those are provisos. Those are provisos, it's not the bylaw. President? Yes. On, on the, in the nine page document that's been handed out, on page four, there's a section C120101, which is a bylaw. On the two page sheet, which talks about the agenda, and on the back, and on the back side, where it says provisos relating to bylaw amendments, C12.01.01 .01 is not listed. So I, I think what I'd like to do is to make a motion to add to the bylaw amendments section C12.01.01. .01. Yes, I am. I, I don't see C12.01.01 .01 under proviso number five, and I just want to be sure that it gets included in the corrections and the adjustments to the bylaws. That's all. I, I'm, not, I'm not questioning anything other than to make sure that it's included with all the other corrections. I want to make sure we're clear, and maybe Wayne can clear this up, but we're talking about the provisos, not the actual constitution and the bylaws. So if you want to address that for us. If there is no objection, that's an absolutely correct thing to do, to put that where it belongs. He said if, if there's no objection to add that to where it belongs, that it should be on that list, by, I guess by acclamation or by lack of, by lack of, uh, by lack of dissent. Thank you. Any objection to adding that Any piece in? Any objection to that? Okay. It shall be added. Any further discussion? All right, we'll move on. That one is done. The first one is gone. I have another amendment. C120901. Amend C120901. It's on page seven. C120901. To amend it by adding the following sentence at the end of the motion. Names or identities may be redacted at the discretion of the congregation council. Is there a second? 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> Discussion. Um, the reason Do we, we have the reason we've suggested this um, is in the Constitution in Chapter 15. It, you don't have a full constitution, so most of us don't have a full constitution. Those are items that are required by that particular chapter, is items that are required by all congregations in the ELCA. And one of the things it talks about, one of the primary thing is it talks about is discipline. And that's the discipline of, it talks both pastors and, and individuals. But in there, it says that if Dave, causes difficulty at church, he should be counseled by the pastor. And if that doesn't work, he should be counseled by several members. And if that doesn't work, then the council should vote to send him to the bishop, or the bishop secretary, the deputy bishop, I don't have that word correctly in my head right now, for whatever discipline may come there. Our concern is twofold. One, that requires a vote of the council. That must be listed in the minutes, and anybody can get a copy of those minutes and find out that Dave had did this, had done this. Our argument here is that something of a personal nature should be redacted, but could be redacted. I think should be, but that's just, just me. Um, so that's our reason for putting this in there, is to protect individuals, because the purpose of all these things we've talked about was for David to repent. And if David repents, why do we need his name floating around there? So that's the only reason to give the council the authority to do that. Anybody want to make a motion? Good reason. Well, he made the motion of a second. We have a second? <laughs> Any discussion? <clears throat> I just want to clarify. I just want to clarify, though, that if it was a discussion of a personal nature, including discipline, that the congregation council, council would go into an executive session, and those minutes would not be made public, and that name would not be published. Now, I don't have the number in front of me, but I know that in, even in the corrections we're proposing here, um, it says that the minutes of the council, the executive council, and the, uh, uh, and the congregation will be, uh, uh, will be kept and they will be provided to somebody who asks for them. And even if it's an executive session, if you take a vote in executive session, you've got to put it in the minutes. 120901, the Congregation Council is responsible for making available to the, or to the congregation the minutes of all Congregation Council, Congregation Council Executive Committee, and Congregation meetings. Make them available. I just want to say, Frank, that Executive Committee is different from Executive Session. This is something I don't want to get involved in, but to give you, give you information. If an organization goes into executive session, those minutes are separate from the minutes of the council. They, they are not, li you can't find them in the regular minutes. No one's allowed to see them under Robert's rules, unless you adopted another rule that said, and you have to show us what's, what's done in executive session, then it's prohibited. If you, and in fact, to the point that you could discipline a member of the co council for doing it. I'm, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't vote for, for your proposal. I'm just trying to explain what an executive session does. Any more discussion? Yes. yes. A.
a required section by the whole church. C-15-1 says, written referral, I'm paraphrasing here, it says C, written referral of the matter by the congregation council to the vice president of the synod. It doesn't say by the executive's committee, it says by the congregation council. Here's the thing. There's a misunderstanding the word executive is being used in two different ways. The executive committee is the officers of the church. Executive session is a closed session of council to discuss matters that are not put before the people, such as discipline and things like that. So the, the, it's kind of like saying deacon and deacon. It can mean two different things depending on who you're talking to. Executive session and, executive, um, and the executive committee are two different things. Correct me? That's correct, right? I, I knew I had that right. I just want to make sure I'm, I want the nod from the man who knows these things, <laughs> who, who's very much thinking he doesn't want to come back here anymore right now. <laughs> Does that make sense when I say it that way? If he said officers of the church instead of executive committee, it would probably help a little bit when we say that, but executive session is a different thing. So is that saying that if I did something that I needed counseling on, my name would never be mentioned at the congregational council meeting before I was referred farther on? No, I, let, me, let me describe that, what that means. So when we talk about counsel, what it means is, for example, let's say, um, Dave, I'm going to pick on you, Dave. Sorry. You're, 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 if your cousin can do it, I can do it. If Dave was caught while cooking a dinner, pilfering all of the paper products from the church. See, there you go. Rat it out by your own friend. If that were to happen, and that was brought to our attention, I would address him with that. It would be, I, I, if they brought it to our attention, it would be my part as the pastor to go speak to him. If he said, I'm not going to listen to you. I don't care what you say. I'm going to do what I want to do. Then some leadership and I would probably talk to him about that together and try to convince him that this is wrong and it's bad for the church and it's bad for him and how it's not helpful. And then it would go, if he kept pushing that, it would go to the council. And the council would have to come in on, on vote on what to do about Dave's pilfering of paper goods besides locking them up, not him, but them up, what to do with that. That's where it goes to the congregational council. There's a couple steps that have happened. And when that dialogue happens, they would go into executive session so it would not be in the minutes that anybody else could pick up and say, well, how do we vote on whether or not we're having another dinner in the week? Oh, look what Dave did. It would be an executive session so that would not show up in the regular minutes. We would have a separate set of minutes for that so that we knew what happened there and could keep go back and check that, but it would not be put into the regular minutes because it's not for public knowledge. It's for personal knowledge, discipline, and correction. Does that help? Okay. Once again, I withdraw the motion. Al seconds it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. I got to burn my head now. <laughs> Where are we now? Okay, moving onward. Are you ready to vote? The question on the amendments to the bylaws with provisos five, one, six, and seven. All those in favor? Uh, one second. There's, sorry, there's a, she's asking a question. She wants to know if this is part of this vote or not. She wasn't sure. Okay, on page six of nine, I have a few questions on um, the the three digits plus the C. Is that where we're talking right now? Yeah, the actual number where you want. 12 point, uh, C, 12.2.2. The top item number F on page 6. C12.02.02. Page 6, the top paragraph. I'm sorry, that. I'm sorry. So that's, that's, not, that's not C12, that's on the other side. You don't have that. It will be on the page. It will be on page six, the top page. Six. The top of page F. six, number one. F. 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 My question: I, Can I talk about that right now? Yep. 
Okay. I wasn't sure what this all meant. Could you give me an example of what the largest number of votes would get on the position on the council? Read it. Elections of at-large members of the Congregation Council shall be by a plurality vote, with the nominees receiving the highest number of votes being elected. Those elected will be given terms in accord with the size of their vote. The person receiving the highest number of votes shall be given the longest term. The person with the second highest number of votes shall be given the second longest term. The assignment shall proceed in a like manner until all positions are filled. I thought the terms were proposed to be three years. They're going to be three-year terms, two-year terms, and one-year terms. What we're trying to do is balance out, because in 2020, everybody's going to be off the council. So we're going to try and balance it out. So there's going to be some three-year terms, two-year terms, and one-year term. The purpose of that is so not everybody rolls off the council at the same time. And that's just the first year. That's after that. That's just to get us started right. for this first time through. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll ex explain since I wrote that paragraph to try to straighten out something. The difficulty that comes is if there's a resignation on the council. If there's a resignation, somebody's appointed to serve only until the next council, until the next congregational meeting. But at that point, you have to have an election. Normally, you'll be electing people for three year terms, but you'll turn up somebody for either a one-year or two-year term now for the first time. And you need to have some rule that decides who gets the three-year terms, who gets the two-year terms, and who gets a one-year term if this turns up. Your present constitution already says plurality. That's a choice that this church has made of how to do this. You just needed a rule to say, how are we going to do this? And this says it's by the highest vote. So there are other ways you could have invented for it, but you know, not for me to say, but this is one of the ways you solve that problem. Okay, and that then relates to 12C.12.02.04. Um, when that, that also says how, to me, how long can a person serve? And um, if a person serves out somebody else's term, then do they have two, three-year terms after they've served out somebody else's term? Yes. So they could, in fact, serve nine, one person could, in fact, serve nine years. Eight years. Eight years and 11 months. Yes, eight years and 11 months. Right. <laughs> Not That's, quite. Um, your, your math is absolutely right, but there's a rule in Robert's Rules, which you wouldn't know about unless you read all 700 pages of it, which says that a, a more than half of a term, if a person is elected to fill out a term, if a person serves more than half, which would be 18 months, that counts as a full term. So you have a rule that says, uh, you have an existing rule that says how you figure this one out. So the most somebody could do would be uh, six, seven years, uh, five months, and 30 days. But okay. you're absolutely right. That all gets added on. I know. We went through this on the first council, and I was that three-year term on the council to, so we could get this all started in the, in the right way. Um, OK, now I have a question. On um, C twelve point four point one H, could you give me some rationale as to why outreach and evangelism was out added to that section? Just to give me understanding here. No. It was added. H was added, I think. H, outreach and evangelism. They deleted the personnel issues one. C, 
12.04.01. These are responsibilities of the church council and outreach and evangelism were added. Okay, question. Can I speak to that? Roger. Yes, uh, the committee looked at that section and it says the congregation council shall, shall be responsible for and uh, there is a seven or eight items and one of the things that we noticed is that there's nothing for evangelism so are we saying that the council we decided that the council should be uh, have some responsibility for evangelism and out outreach and that was our only reason for adding that and uh, the council seemed to go along with that so that's the answer that I have. Well, I have a couple more questions here. I was wondering who, because um, 12, C12.401, um, I think it's F. I have a hard time reading this, but here. Personnel, personnel issues other than the call of rostered pastors there's responsible, uh, my question is, who is responsible for the HR related issues in our church? Pastor and administration. That's a pastoral responsibility. Okay, and the last question I have is, who is the person on the council or staff or whoever is the keeper to make sure we adhere to all these revisions in the Constitution. I would say it's probably the president's responsibility. Is, it, is the president and secretary, is that correct? I mean, anybody could, yeah, anybody could call and say, hey, there's a mistake here, and hold people yeah. accountable. The document itself holds us accountable, really. Yeah, there, 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 there is no provision or anyone outside of your system to make a judgment about whether the, counts, whether the congregation is actually following its constitution. The obligation then comes to everyone who's elected to office and to the congregation as a whole. You can make an issue about this. Are you following the constitution? Mutual accountability is a very Christian thing to do. Okay. The ayes have it. Two thirds in favor in the amendment of the bylaws and the provision. No, we're not there yet, are we? No, we have the vote. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. Opposed? Okay. The ayes have it. Two thirds are in favor of the amendment to the bylaws and the proviso. Five, four, five, six are adopted. Will the secretary please move the amendment to continue resolution? On behalf of the Congregation Council, I move the amendment to the continuing resolution C7.01.A06 be seconded. Is there Since the motion comes from the Congregational Council, a second is not required. The amendment to, con is to the continuing resolution is before you. Is there a discussion? Okay, you, what, do you want to write again, sir? They would like to, they were trying to pass, they were trying to hear what the number was. Several people over here asked what the number was. We could read that number again. C7.01.A06. C7.01. A zero six. Mm -hmm. 
she asked if somebody could explain what it means. The change there, if you see the strikeout, is to change the name from the, the endowment procurement program to the word fund. That is the change that's being offered. So instead of saying, instead of reading, money from the Hope Endowment Legacy Procurement Program may be used for this purpose, it would read, money from the Hope Endowment Fund may be used for this purpose. Fund is what we commonly call it. We, never, we don't refer very often ever here to a legacy procurement program. We call it the fund. Does that help? Okay. Are you ready to vote? The question is on the amendment to the continuing resolution. All in the favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no? The ayes have it, and the amendment to the continuing resolution is adopted. That concludes the business for this meeting. If there's no objections, we will adjourn. Since there is no, is there any objections? <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We need a closing prayer. Pastor Ronnie, would you close us in prayer, please? All right, I get the fun part, the best part, to pray with you. So let us pray. Heavenly, gracious God, we give you all the praise and the glory. We thank you for revealing your Son to us. We thank you for the gift that you have given us through the salvation, through our Lord, and for his death on the cross and resurrection. We thank you for the life that you give us together here as a church. And gracious God, we know sometimes that not every moment perhaps uh, is as joyful when we go through many things, but we ask that through the challenges and through the struggles and through everything that you give us joy to know that we are about your business. Let your name be glorified. Help us to share Christ and to make Christ known to everyone around us. Bless those who are gathered and give us joy for the rest of the day as we ask all this for the sake of your Son and in his name we pray. Amen.
I'm in agreement on it. It works a lot better up here in town. Yeah, me too. I hope so. I only discovered it. I want to see something back in my life. Who the freak is I'm doing here? Well, that's where it's from.